tried all the rest? Learn from the best. Join WDGLC.com today. Hey there, everybody. It's Wayne DeFrancesco. Welcome to my website. And today we're going to do a swing analysis. This is the most requested lately. Gary Woodland uh, just yesterday teamed up with Matt Kuchar to win the World Cup big payday and uh, not an unimportant tournament as uh, all of the formats that are Ryder Cup and President's Cup oriented are in the World Cup, so uh, did a great job in the alternate shot. And if he's ever considered for a captain's pick, I'm sure that will come into play. So nice victory. Of course, Kuchar is perfect complement to Woodland, the most consistent guy out there, pretty much, and uh, Woodland probably the longest um, semi-straight hitter of anybody. So I wanted to take. A look first at two down the line views and one of the things I wanted to point out here is how camera angles make a big difference even when they are uh, placed subtly off of right behind the hands. If you look at the camera angle on the right, this picture uh, courtesy of uh, Terry Rolls out of San Francisco. Um, always putting up nice shots um, probably had the camera set and then when you get to these part threes or fours if the cameras fixed the guys just sort of tee up wherever they tee up and I think in this case the camera is probably on his heels back here a little bit and what you're gonna see in the takeaway is it's gonna make the hands look out away from him and then here on the left uh, I got this one off of YouTube it was a, uh, a Titleist demo because the camera here is placed further out toward the ball and off the hand line sort of in right around I would say right about here what you'll see here is the hands are going to appear to be right on the shaft plane and I think generally speaking we would probably find the hands slightly above the shaft plane not as far as the iron shot and not as on as the driver here so anyway just always keep an eye on your on your camera angles and let's take a look now one thing you probably know about about Woodland is that he hits the ball as far as anybody and uh, in quite an impressive fashion interesting thing is even though both of these swings, I have some swings at regular speed that I'll show you, the tempo that Woodland uses is not a three to one tempo. So of course uh, in golf there are exceptions to everything and in this case it's another exception to the three to one tempo rule. Yeah, Woodland is more like 26 or 7 back and then the fastest forward swing you'll see. Now here it just it's difficult to figure out exactly when his forward swing starts because he's got a really really hard catch meaning that as the club is moving backwards his lower body is going to start about now and he puts a tremendous pull or stress on the shaft and the club kicks back a little bit as the body begins to lower and the hands drop. Now a couple of these things are counter to what I would prefer in the swing and a lot of the stuff is exactly what I would really like in a swing. First thing you'll see is the really really fine deep hip action here. Look how the butt has gone behind the box line in the backswing. So that's something that I would really like to see in anybody is to watch the, the top line of the right thigh move backwards while keeping the knee flexed. So that's adding knee flex, deepening the hips. Another way I always try to get people to do that is I tell them to see if they can push their belt buckle backwards while keeping their head up against the 
line against the forehead there. So now the real difficulty is in keeping that depth in the forward swing. Now look at where those left hip is now. It's again behind the box. Now these are things that you don't really even see in tour players. They're in the box, but being deeper than the box is is not that common. Look at that. Look at the hips back in the box here. Now here's the iron shot. Now you'll recall a couple of things that I do where I put the, especially in the lessons that I give, I'll put a shaft between the feet and run it up just in front of the knee line. You'll see here that there's no way he's he's not even going to touch that thing. Look how deep that is. So, so once again, we see some of the common elements that I've found over over time doing a lot of these things. One is the compressing into the ground coming from the midsection moving back. There's the back swing compression and then the forward swing a bit more. This camera is a little lower you won't see as much. This one you'll see a little more. So there's the back swing and forward swing. So again, really, really using the ground in a powerful fashion here. Now a lot of the stuff that he does is fairly conventional. He's got a pretty neutral grip. Hands are a little low at a dress, but that's also very common. Posture, his back is pretty straight. I mean, this is a super strong guy and uh, I'm sure he works on that posture and it certainly doesn't bother his body to to have it a little bit stiffer at a dress than you'll see some guys. Now, you'll notice... Learn the Pivot Compression Golf Swing. Join WDGLC.com today. That as the club moves up to the top, He's going to get into what you would call a cross the line position. If I run the if I run the plane up, you'll see that the club is to the right side of that. And then, interestingly enough, when he starts forward, his hands are going to descend vertically a bit. Here's the end of the grip. So we draw that initial movement. It's right down at his shoelaces, almost dead straight down. And when he does it, his shaft steepens actually from where it was here. You can see it get a little steeper. Now, this is where great hip movement and pivot control and incredible strength come into play because he's initially his right arm is going to stay is going to go straight down. You would it would appear like he's running the risk of getting it behind him. But when you create space like he does, and when you are strong enough to squeeze late in the downswing like he's doing, and control the shaft like this, it doesn't get stuck. It doesn't even come close to getting stuck. So that's just an excellent hitting plane position. Look where the club head is in relation to his hands, right, right on top of him right here. Nice. So here's another thing that the address position has to do with whether or not you're going to hit the ball on the shaft plane if I take all these away. So here's the the initial shaft position. Let's say I draw that. Let's say I, if he raised his hands up three degrees and pointed the club up to his belt buckle more. Let's put it here at 56. Now watch what happens when he goes forward here and hits the ball how close the shaft is. So again, don't always judge whether the approach is high by the initial shaft position. It just depends on how you hang your arms. And guys that like to hang and have long arms are going to be lower and thus their position coming into impact is going to be a little higher. Now we can see the tremendous pull he gets on the club on the way down. 
His right arm appears to be getting a little bit behind him, but again, with the incredible pivot movement that he has, you'll find that he gets away with it. Now, here's a, a little different view. The camera's now behind him a bit, but watch where, the, watch where this club is pointed and where it kicks. So again, you would figure this guy's going to get stuck and come too far from the inside, but look where the shaft is now. And even though the right arm is kind of jammed up behind his hip, watch the, watch the hip rotation here. When he hits this ball, he's probably 70 degrees open. And remember how deep that was, too. So he's able to release his right arm where it doesn't release way out to the right, and it goes right around him. So if you watch the exit over here, look at that. Just really nice again there. So let's flip over to a front view and this is kind of the new generation of you know how do you hit it 340 yards in the air. You're gonna see a lot of right loading here and when he hits the ball he's gonna stay he's gonna be back more. Now this is you know this is right out of Nicholas book here so there's the big stretch now even though that he is wide, notice that he's got a nice 90 degree angle. So he's also using his wrist. He's not extending the club and waiting to cock it. He's cocked here. Now watch this thing. And you'll also see a, an athletic movement here. Now this is not something that I would recommend to anybody who's not as good as he is. Both hips slide out of the box and now he's got to recover all of that. But look at this movement here. Now that is where the club really gets bent. Too bad whoever was taking these pictures didn't know how to use the shutter speed, but at least we got a still camera. So you can see overall, not much lateral, but from where he was in the backswing with all that negative movement there, look at the amount of lateral he had to pull on that left side. He went from there to there. That's a lot. Now if you see Hogan, his hips wouldn't move that far to the right, but they would move this far to the left. But that'll show you the difference in the equipment. Hogan had the ball back further than that and stayed on it more and really probably just hit bullets out there. I think this guy is hitting the ball. I haven't actually been able to watch him hit one but <laughs> you could tell he's almost breaking a club on his back there so pretty cool so let's, let's flip over and see if we can I can show you one where he's at regular speed because the interesting thing is and, and this is something that good players do a lot that confuses amateurs is that it just doesn't just doesn't appear that a swing like that is going to hit the ball as far as it goes. You know, but you got to take into consideration the the strength, agility, technique, and just the the gift, the talent that creating club edge speed and applying it hard to the ball. How that all plays into how far you can hit the ball. Now here we got a better view. This camera was positioned luckily better so we can see that the takeaway does go a little bit above but not much. So pretty conventional here. Your progressions are, are pretty conventional. So here we were at 43 to, to 50. Not a lot of height. Now some of these guys that hit it miles up in the air, look at that left arm is almost vertical, right? Look at his. It's not like that at all. This is way, way more conventional. A little crossed. There's the descending hands. There's the squat into the ground. Look at the club bend. Now he approaches on the shaft plane. The arm stays a little behind him. Watch where the hips are when this ball goes. There it is. Now here's the exit. Beautiful. Right back on that high plane line there. Look at that thing come out. So let's watch this one regular speed. Now what I was talking about before with tempo, this backswing is relatively slow 
on the scale more like 27 beats and on the forward swing I was trying to count up a few of these and I was getting six and six and a half and nobody does that so when he starts pulling on it he can get the club to the ball faster than anybody I think that's where the I think that's where the speed really comes from so you can just tell man he's just mauling that ball I heard him, he was talking a little bit about his game, and he said, you know, he really does work on his tempo. And most people who don't, who work on their tempo would, would work on not being fast, sort of not understanding the ratios that uh, have been found to be, you know, occurring in most good players. But that being said, it probably, it just for him, plays into maybe controlling the ball a little bit better I don't know it certainly doesn't matter because most people who are going to take it back that slow and swing that hard and get it down to the ball that fast they they always complain about feeling quick boom <laughs> so don't really have a lot of great forward view shots. Here's one that has a good a good impact. Again, a lot of times, you know, I'll take a look at the head and, and I, he's a little bit of a head turner, right? So I'm always, it's another one of those little things that I like to see in a swing. I like to see the head go with the hit. I think that allows the upper body to open up and to get that lower body clearing better than if the head stayed way back. So anyway, there's Gary Woodland, and uh, you're going to see a lot of him.